Okay, so thank you very much for coming along. My name is Ian Holmes. I'm part of the, uh, the uh, support team here working on Digimap, and I'm joined today by my colleague Guy McGarver. And we're going to look at the new Roam application. Um, just to let you know, after this webinar, you'll get an email tomorrow, uh, tomorrow lunchtime, where there will be a link to the recording of this webinar, the PowerPoint slides that we're going to go through, a transcript of any questions and answers that are asked, and also there'll be a link to a very short survey feedback form. Uh, we'd very gratefully fill that in. Um, as I say, this webinar is being recorded and will be hosted on our YouTube channel, so if there's anything you miss, you should be able to go back and, uh, and look at it again tomorrow lunchtime. It'll come out uh, at 1 o'clock tomorrow. Before we go any further, it's really useful if we could just run a very quick poll just so we get an idea of who's attending the webinar. So if I just launch this, if you could um, tick the option that best uh, matches your current status at your institution, that would be really good. Um, we'll just let, uh, let it run for a couple more seconds. Yeah, so we've got a mix of people here, 50% support staff, some undergraduates and some academic staff. So yeah, thanks very much for doing that. That's, uh, that's much appreciated. What we're going to cover today then, uh, the first bit is uh, why, why have we created a new Rome application? So we've done this um, basically to bring the technology used in Digimap up to date, so to use the latest technologies that are available to us. And the main driver for doing this, it means that we can further develop the application in the future. We can add more functionality, do better enhancements to the, uh, to the system. So by updating it to use the latest technologies available, it gives us more flexibility um, um, uh, for improvements in the future. As part of this, the new technologies are also more tablet friendly. We are seeing an increased usage uh, of the software, the applications on tablet devices. So by moving to a newer framework, a new set of technologies, then this makes it more easier to use on a tablet device. And the third one is that there is actually improved performance. So everybody wants things to, expects things to appear nice and fast these days. And we have found that with the new framework that maps do render now um, quite a bit quicker than they did in the old frameworks. So in terms of how this will affect users of the system, um, hopefully everyone will like the new interfaces. Uh, we think they look a lot cleaner and a lot nicer and a lot more up to date. But in terms of actual end users, we are replicating all the existing functionality uh, of the existing Roam applications. So everything that you can do at the moment in the Roam applications, you'll be able to do in the new ones as well. We are actually, as part of this, doing a few minor improvements. So some of the inconsistencies and in some of the and in some of how the annotation tools work, they're all getting standardised so that they all work the same way, which makes it a little bit more intuitive and user friendly. A couple of things to note, though, is that the two, the old and the new um, Rome applications, are fully interoperable. So if you save a map in the old in the existing Rome application, you can open it in the new one, and it'll look exactly the same. All the base data is exactly the same, so all the, the mapping data that sits behind the system, it's all looking at the same data on our on our infrastructure here. So everything is fully interoperable between the two. So you, there's nothing to stop you having a go in the new applications uh, and uh, saving maps, customizing maps, printing maps, um, but anything you do is, is fully interoperable with the old Rome clients as well. And you know, a fairly common question is uh, when that people ask is when we'll we be turning off the old Rome clients. So just to reassure you that we will run the two clients side by side concurrently for a, a period um, and we will monitor usage so that we know when people are, are switching over and using the new one more than the old one. Uh, and this, obviously, we, we're part of the University of Edinburgh. We're fully aware that people have got teaching materials written and have screen grabs in them. And by running the two things side by side, that gives you plenty of time to uh, update the screen grabs in any teaching materials that you've already got prepared. So uh, we'll come on to timescales in a bit, but yeah, the two systems will run side by side um, for the foreseeable future. And we will obviously uh, communicate with you when we plan to turn the old ones off as well. Okay, just another quick poll. It's really helpful to know uh, how many people have actually used it already that are attending this webinar. So a very quick poll. Yeah, Have you used the new beta Rome interfaces, yes or no? Only 20% of you attending today have used the new one and 80% haven't. So that's interesting to know. Um, the, the beta Rome applications were launched, uh, well, the Ordnance Survey one was available in October last year, so it's been available for a few months now. 
and we launched all the, the others for all the other collections in November last year. So, yeah, so they are they are there. But rather than um, go through these slides, what we'll do is we're actually just going to jump and uh, show you the new applications uh, via a live demo. So here we are. I'm logged into Digimap. Um, we're going to go in the Ordnance Survey one today, but these new Roam applications exist in every collection. So feel free to look at the ones that are relevant to the areas that you, you most uh, use. So the old Roam clients, the existing ones, can be accessed by the Roam button at the top here. The new ones are this third button down where it says New Roam, and it shows the text in yellow to show uh, that it's a new application. So I'm just going to click on here, and it's going to load. So the first thing you notice is uh, it's a different color scheme. We've got a dark blue color scheme. It says beta release across the top because it's still a, it's still a beta release. It's subject to change, but these changes should be fairly minor now. Um, the also thing to know is that uh, the majority of the functionality is hidden in a sidebar, which is accessed by this menu on the left, and this is collapsed by default to try and maximize the amount of map area that you see when you log in. So in terms of the similarities then, we've tried to keep it as, as close to the existing Roam clients as possible. Uh, specifically the data, if you zoom in, I'll just zoom in on Edinburgh, which is where we are, you'll see that the data behaves just the same. It's exactly the same data that you get in the existing live service. Um, it's all pointing at the same data on our infrastructure back here in Edinburgh. Um, so all the data is exactly the same. The zoom levels are exactly the same. At the bottom left-hand corner, we've kept our, uh, our view names, so you can see them. They're exactly the same as the existing system as well. On the right hand side here, our zoom controls are exactly the same as well. So we've got a, a zoom to area, click to drag a box. We've got our, our plus and minus buttons and the zoom slider and also zoom to full extents as well. So these are all, all the same tools that you're familiar with in the same location. The base maps option is another area where everything is just the same. It's presented slightly differently. We've got uh, two columns of, of information with our nice little images. But again, you can select a different base map if it's appropriate for this zoom level and choose the different ones that are available there. So again, it's, it's something that's just the same as the existing system. Our print functionality, again, this is, this is just the same as well. It's a slightly different look and feel, obviously, that fits in with the, the different color scheme and the arrangement, but all the functionality is just the same. So you've still got all the same options um, and all the same mapping and layout options as well. Um, yeah, so it all works just the same as the existing uh, print functionality. Now, I mentioned at the start there that we moved some things into what we call a sidebar. That's accessed via this menu button on the left-hand side here. If I expand this, you'll see we get a bunch of options now. This is a new fun feature of the system, and this is where the majority of functionality has been moved to. Now, the overview map, this is just like the overview map um, you have in the existing system. If I zoom in and out, you'll see that it changes, and it's got a little red box that you can drag around to recenter your map. So again, that's, uh, that's just the same as we've already got. The map content panel, which is sort of the legend here. Um, this is, uh, again, it's just the same. It's got our legend. If we choose a vector layer in here, then it becomes an interactive legend, and you can turn things on and off. So if we don't want to see any roads on this particular map, we can turn them all off. So again, very similar to what we've currently got. It's just, it just sits in our new framework, and hopefully it's a little bit more up-to-date and modern. The final panel that's um, got the same information on it is the map information panel. So again, it's got links to our help pages. It's got links to the license agreement, the map extents that you're currently viewing, and also our coordinates. So one thing we have changed here is the ability to display the current course coordinates using lat long, so in WGS84 projection. So that's a bit of new functionality, and also the ability to capture coordinates. Um, I'll come back to that in a minute. But yeah, so basically the, the, the main functionality where you interact with the map, that's all fairly similar to what you're used to. Um, it's just that some of the functionality is now in the sidebar down the left-hand side, which is open and closed using this menu button. Okay, but we have made a number of improvements. As part of this redesign and uh, porting to a new framework, we have made a number of improvements. Uh, the first one, obviously, is that the majority of the functionality has been moved into this sidebar. And this sidebar is collapsed by default so that you've got a uh, maximum area of map displayed as possible. I'm going to switch this back to one of the rasters. Okay, now 
Uh, before we look in the sidebar in any further detail, I just wanted to have a quick look at the search box here as well. This is another area where we've improved the experience. So in the old Roam clients, when you did a search, depending on what you were searching for, you had to put the search terms into different fields. We've actually unified all the search terms so you can enter anything in this box that you wish now. So for example, you can enter street names. So if I search for Downing Street in London, I'll do a quick search and you'll see it finds Downing Street. So you can enter street names in there. You can also enter postcodes, so the postcode for here. Uh, so you can enter postcodes in here. You can also enter coordinates and place names as well. So if I do a search for Ben Nevis, okay, it will find, um, find Ben Nevis was, and it will zoom the map. Okay, but the change here we've made is that we can now search for things like coordinates and um, Ordnance Survey grid references in the same field, whereas previously you had to enter these in a different one. So the first one I'll do is I'll just search for Big Ben. So this is the Ordnance Survey grid reference for Big Ben, and you'll see, let me just change the map to master map, you'll see it's, it's zoomed directly to this. I've not had to put this into a different field, and there's Big Ben. The same goes for national grid coordinates as well. So if I take these two, these are the cursor or center coordinates of the summit of Ben Nevis. Again, if I just search for that, it finds those cursor coordinates. And once the map renders, there we go, we're on the summit of Ben Nevis. Um, let's just zoom out a little bit. So we get one of the rasters displaying. There we go. So there's the summit of Ben Nevis, up in uh, the Highlands of Scotland. So just to show you what I mean, in the previous Rome clients, I've got the existing one here. The search functionality was accessed through this button and this window, but you had different tabs for place, road, and postcode. But if you wanted to search for a place based on coordinates, you actually had to split it out into eastings and northings, or latitude and longitude through here. Whereas in the new one, you can enter everything in a single field. So we're calling this our sort of centralized, unified search. You can key everything into this particular location. So that's quite a nice improvement, uh, and hopefully makes the user experience a bit better. Now, the other things we're going to look at are in this sidebar area. So the first thing to note is that our um, open and save maps information has moved into a new My Maps panel. So that's the access via this bookmark link here, which hopefully um, conveys to users the idea that this is things that they've saved. These are bookmarks to different maps that they've created. And again, it works exactly the same as the old system. So anything you've saved in any collection, you can open in any other collection, and it'll port all your annotations across and uh, center and zoom the map appropriately. So here, um, I can browse the ones I've previously created. Here's one created um, for a previous webinar, and this shows the building we're in today and some annotations drawn on top. <clears throat> So if I was to save this as a, as a new map, and I'll call this uh, Rome webinar, just to show you that this can interact um, with the old Rome clients as well, we get a message to say that it's been saved. Now, if I go to my old, uh, the existing Rome client, and go to the open saved maps option, which is where it lives, you'll see we've now got the previous, the um, Rome webinar map that I've just saved today. If I open that, you'll see it zooms the map to the appropriate scale, and it's pulled all the annotations in using the correct symbology. So I've got solid lines of different colors. So that's just to show you that the two systems are fully integrated and fully interoperable between them. So any maps that I save in the old uh, Roam applications are openable in the new one, and vice versa. OK, so there's our My Maps panel, open and save, as the two tabs all centralized in a single panel. The next menu item down here, this is our overlays panel. Now again, we've only got one overlay at the moment. This is our hill shading overlay. If I just zoom out a little bit so we can see some of uh, the surrounding area in Arthur's seat. If we turn this on, again, hopefully users are familiar with this. This was the hill shading option that was available um, from the overlays button on the old Rome clients. But again, we can see the slight definition around Arthur's seat there. 
But what we've done by moving this into a panel, we've taken this step because it gives us a lot more area to play with so that we can add more overlays going forward. So potentially different types of boundary could go in there, postcode areas, sectors and districts, perhaps um, ward boundaries, census boundaries, things like that we can put into this area as different overlays that people can turn on and off. So it doesn't have to be just hill shading. Now the next panel down is our annotations panel and we have had a, uh, had a few changes in this particular area. Um, the first thing to note is that when you choose one of these options, so if I select the polygon tool, and I'll just zoom in a bit to our annotations where we are today, you'll see that I've got a tooltip appearing on the screen that tells me to click to start drawing. So if I outline around a building here, you'll see that that tooltip has now changed and it says double click to stop drawing. So we've added tooltips to these features uh, and these functions to try and give a bit more information to the user. So we don't have to have instructions anywhere. We've just got these short, concise tooltips that give a little bit more information and hopefully explain what they need to do to make those tools work. So here I can click on the polygon to add a measurement label. So that's one of the first things to note, that we've added these tooltips where they're appropriate to some of these tools. Now, uh, some of the other changes that we've made to the annotations tool, um, they're all grouped together in this single panel now. So we've got three tabs across the top to create new annotations, import existing annotations or data sets that you've got, and to export annotations from Digimap. So previously, these were located in three different areas in the system. You had an annotations toolbar, you had a, a save maps, and an open maps option as well. So now we've added them all into one panel, so it's, it's a logical flow where you can create, import, and export using the relevant tabs across the top here. The other sort of change we've made, so all these tools are exactly the same as you got previously in the annotations toolbar, um, but you'll see the modified tools are grayed out at the moment. We've actually um, rationalized uh, all the modified tools so that they all work the same way. And you'll see now, in order to use one of the modify tools, you have to select it first. So I'll click on the polygon here that I've just digitized, and now the modify tools are available. Previously, in the existing Roam applications, you didn't always need to select the polygons or the features before you could modify them. Some of the tools let you modify them without having to select them. So what we've done is we've made it all the same so that all the modify tools work exactly the same way. The other thing we've done to these tools, that's the other tool that's undergone a bit more of a change is this modify tool. Um, in, the, uh, in the new Roam applications now, when you modify a feature, you select it first, click on the modify tool, and now you can click and drag the vertices anywhere you like. The thing that's different is that we're no longer displaying the vertices on this polygon. Okay, in the uh, existing Roam applications, all the vertices were displayed, so you could see exactly where they were and you could move them and we displayed pseudo vertices in between each one so you could create new ones. But we thought that uh, that made it look quite cluttered. So for complex polygons where you had curves and lots of vertices, it could make it look really hard and you couldn't see where exactly all the vertices were. And we did have feedback from a couple of uh, different users at different institutions to say that um, it, was, it was a sort of complicated way of doing it. So what we've done is we've removed the vertices, but you can actually just click and drag anywhere you like. So if you want to create a new vertex, just click and drag on this polygon and move it out. If you want to move an existing vertex, just find the vertex and, and move it. Um, to delete vertices, you just press shift on your keyboard and click on the vertex, and away they go. So just to show you what I mean, if I save this, this map, and we'll just call it, uh, oops digitizing and I'll open this in the old home application so open save maps open our digitizing one you can see we've got the, the new polygon that I've just created now to modify this we had to go to the annotation tools click on this modify um, feature and now when I've selected that you'll see all these vertices are displayed and we've got the actual vertex is displayed in a dark gray um, circle and the pseudo vertices displayed as a light gray circle. So you could click and drag on these and modify the feature as required. For this polygon, it's not particularly bad. But if you choose a polygon that's got a lot more vertex, uh, vertices, you'll see it's quite hard now to see which one it is that you're trying to move. So the idea behind taking these off is it just makes the display a lot clearer so that users can edit these features and more how they want to do that. Okay, going back to our uh, new Roam application here. 
So that was the annotation tools. So they're all accessed through this menu here. Um, the next button down here on the left hand side is our measurement tools. And again, there's been a couple of changes to this area, which hopefully make it more useful to people. Now, um, you see, we, we've still got the ability to measure lines and areas, so distances and areas. But the key thing now is you can actually measure multiple features at once. So if I want to measure the area of a polygon, so let's measure this particular building here. And when I double click, you see the tooltip tell me to double click. It puts our little area value in here. But also, you can now actually measure multiple features. So if I want to compare the size of that building with this feature, I can have multiple on here. And it's the same for distances as well. So if I wanted to measure the distance down this particular road to get to the end, I can double click. And if I wanted to do the same thing to check how far it was to walk around the other way, you can go around and measure multiple features okay so you, this is a new improvement in the old applications you can only measure one feature at once and you only see one value on there so if you had lots of things to compare you had to do them all separately and write down uh, or record the values somewhere whereas now you can actually measure them multiple features on the screen the other thing we've done is we've actually displayed metric and imperial units in the same um, window by default um we'll measure uh, areas using these metric units and same for distances so they're labeled using the metric units but the last measurement feature you created is shown on the left hand side here and it also shows the imperial units so here i measured this this line which is 430 meters but in the left hand side here in the measurement tools panel we're also showing it in yards and um that'll switch to miles at a certain sensible threshold as well so it's the same for areas um so again if i measured an area of this building here and we'll label it using the metric units but in the panel on the left hand side you'll see what the, we're displaying it in the imperial units as well in this case acres okay so the final panel on the left hand side we've already touched on this before just so the similarities which is the majority of the information at the top but as i said we have added a couple of things the first one being that the cursor coordinates are now displayed using lat long values um, which some people will be familiar with. Google Maps uses those when you are uh, navigating and selecting the map. That, that pulls through the uh, coordinates in that long. We've also added this ability to capture coordinates from the screen, and this came directly from user feedback. There were a variety of ways of doing it in the old Rome applications, although none were specifically written to, to do that. Some people have worked workarounds um, out to, to uh, capture the coordinates from the screen, but it's a fairly common uh, use case that people want to know what's at a particular location so they they click on the map but you'll see whenever i move the cursor the cursor coordinates on the panel on the left hand side here change but some people wanted to be able to record that so what we've done we've put this simple toggle switch on here and you'll see now there's no coordinates being displayed but when i click on the map the location that i've just selected is now frozen so i selected in the college of art here and I can now copy and paste these coordinates out of here and put them into uh, some other software or into a report. So that's a new bit of functionality. It's very simple, um, but it allows you to click on the map and to save those coordinates off. So you can use those. And obviously, you can use those in the search function as well, and you can use them in things like Google Maps as well. So that's the coordinate capture uh, option that's available through there. Okay, so uh, I've showed you the uh, changes, the improvements that we've made to the Roam application here using the Ordnance Survey one. But as I said before, the, uh, there's, a, there's a new Roam application for every collection now. They've been available since before Christmas, and we would urge you to have a look. So um, all the tools are the same. Everything works the same way with a sidebar on the left-hand side and the search option. Um, in terms of uh, time scales, so... At some point, we will switch the application so that when you go to the home page of Digimap, when you click on the Roam button, you'll be taken to the new Roam clients for each collection, and the old ones will exist, but they'll be under the button. So we're going to swap them around. So what I mean by that is if I just go back to our home page. So on here, when you're on the Urban Survey one, so uh, we'll shortly be changing it. So when you click on the Roam button, you're automatically taken to the new Roam applications and we'll keep the old ones available as an option down here and we'll rename that button. So the plan is that we'll, um, we'll do that some point after the Easter break. Uh, so we'll swap them around in every collection. 
Um, but like I said before, we will run all the old and the new Rome clients concurrently for a period of time, and we are planning to do that until the end of the current academic year at this moment. But this isn't set in stone, and if we find that loads of people are still using the old clients, which we'll monitor through usage behind the scenes, we'll, uh, we'll ensure that uh, nobody gets a surprise and we don't just turn things off when you're not expecting it. So we will monitor usage and we'll switch off the old one once the usage uh, has declined to a certain level. And we will, of course, communicate our plans to you. Once we have firm uh, timescales for this, we will communicate via our usual support channels, so email, Twitter, Facebook, things like that. Um, yeah, so you should have plenty of time to update any teaching materials that you've got. So yeah, we would encourage you to have a look at the new Rome applications. Um, hopefully you'll find them easier to use. Uh, feedback we've had so far has been very positive. Um, some of the previous comments we've had here, there's, there's been concerns around the timescales for removing the old ones uh, and making sure that you've got enough time to update your teaching materials. But like I say, we will monitor that and communicate all our timescales once we have them. A couple of other comments that people have raised. Um, some people spoke about potentially moving the search box into the header bar. So this, uh, at the moment, the search box takes up a reasonable amount of space on the actual map window. Um, so the idea behind this was to move this functionality up into the header bar, if I just zoom in a bit, so we'll look at this map. And then that would free up that bit of space on the map to make it a bit more, more usable to people. So we're looking at ways that we might be able to implement that. And also another comment was around the sidebar taking up too much room. So we are aware that the current sidebar that we've got, um, it does occupy a uh, sort of a quarter or a fifth of the map window. So we're looking at ways of making that resizable so you can actually minimize it or make it bigger if there's something that you want to do particular with the map. So again, we are looking at these comments. So if you do have any feedback, please do let us know. Um, I mentioned at the start today that once once this webinar is finished, you will be prompted to fill in a little survey. It would be really useful if you could take just a couple of minutes to feed back. Um, if you don't uh, have the time today, there will be another link to it in the email that comes out tomorrow. But in there, there are a couple of questions specifically relating to the new application. Do you like the look and feel? Can you find the functions that you like? Is there anything that you don't like? Please do let us know any feedback that you've got. And we do welcome feedback via any of our support channels, so email, phone, and chat as well. Um, that's really all I wanted to cover today. Thank you very much for, for coming along. I hope that's been useful. Myself and Guy will stick around for a few minutes to answer any questions that you may have. Um, otherwise, yeah, thank you very much, and please do feedback any questions and comments that you have. Thank you.